So Patrick, do you remember last week's video? At the, re at the end, I was kind of uh, concluding our video. I said mm -hmm. something about next chapter is about teaching your children to pray. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I messed up. I know. I'm just admi I'm just admitting it right here on camera that I messed up. That's another chapter. I, I guess I had jumped ahead or I just read the whole book that I'm switching up chapters. But really, chapter 20 is just about praying for your children, not necessarily teaching your children. Actually, I think we're going to get into that in chapter 21. So that's next week. But this week is just Got praying it. for your children as parents. That makes sense then. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I don't know if that throws you off a little bit. Are you prepared to talk about just praying for your children? I think so. I think they go hand in hand. So, um, right. you know, praying for your kids and then teaching them how to pray. Right. I mean, if you're not praying for your kids, how are you supposed to teach them how to pray? So I think it makes like a lot of it. sense. It's kind of what we talked about last week. You know, if you're not doing that yourself, the example set, how are your children going to do it? Loving the world, uh, enjoying life, mm -hmm. all of those things. So this week, some of the things that we're going to talk about is, you know, if God gives you children, he expects us to be praying for them, uh, to be uh, interceding on their behalf, not just for their right now, but for their future, mm -hmm. for all the things coming up, for, for, you, for ourselves as parents to be praying, how do we be a, a better parent? to our children, mm. you know, and I think it's one of the most important things we can do, but I, I worry if it's not one of the most neglected things that I we do. I was just thinking the same thing. It's probably one of the most important things we can do as a parent, but the thing that least happens or happens the smallest. Well, amount. I mean, I've already confessed something, so, so we could just keep this as, um, <laughs> confession, uh, time. confession time. <laughs> You know, the, yeah. if the truth is, is we probably all, we could always pray more. Absolutely. Always. Oh, we could pray sure. for our children more. We could pray through circumstances more. Yeah. So we're not going to, this. the goal is not to make everyone feel guilty <laughs> or for us to feel uh, guilted into right. praying. Uh, there's a joy in praying. And mm -hmm. that's what we want to talk about today is what, what are the joys found in praying for your children? It's a very good point. You know, as the book has been talking about, I mean, it's, the title is Disciple Making Parent, mm -hmm. right? And so um, a big part of this is that you have to be a disciple to begin with in order to be a disciple making parent. Um, and so how do we pray for our kids? I think that's a question that I know I get a good bit. Like, okay, my teenager is going through this or my preteen is going through this. How, how do I deal with this? Because mm -hmm. as parents, there's no book <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, there's Perfect. plenty of books out there. Oh, yeah. But... None of them are going to be, hey, this specific example, this specific thing that's happening to you and your family at this moment, mm -hmm. this is exactly what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we want that mm -hmm. because it's easier. Right. Um, but I think that's where this prayer comes in. And so we need to raise the stake of prayer is so important mm -hmm. that we begin to go, okay, we don't know what to do. Right. And that's a great place to be. Oh, man. Because we get to bring it before the, the Lord and give it to Him. Right. Doesn't mean that we're going, okay, here's my plate. I'm dumping it here at your feet and I'm walking away from it. I'm putting it at your feet. God, give me wisdom. Guide me. Direct me on how to not only uh, emotionally deal with this as a parent right. or whatever it may be, physically or just there's so many ways that just burdens come on us as parents because that. we care so much for our kids. Right. But how do we be, be a part of the process of how God is molding our own kids mm -hmm. um, to be made more into his right. image? So I have a couple of just practical ways okay. that we can, and we can talk about these. Yeah. Uh, but one of them is first you as a parent, just start praying maybe in secret, mm -hmm. maybe by yourself, you know, wherever you are in your quiet time or time alone with God that you start praying for your children, just you alone. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's such a, maybe a first step is a lot of times maybe something's going on. Maybe, you know, it's a rough time or whatever. And we want to call a family meeting and we're going to make everybody get on their knees and uh, at the couches all around our living room or maybe at our, at our dinner table or something like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, and kind of force everybody into a prayer time. And yeah. while that may be the thing that's needed or beneficial, I think sometimes, um, God wants us just to come before him first as a parent and not for, forget that portion that maybe we seek him in our own private times, you know, because 
God could show us a lot of things in that. Is it us? Is it them? Or what? Take a different step that could change things. So that's just, you know, that's just one practical thing, I think, is to start praying. I think it's really good because I think that there are a lot of times where we want to have this big experience. We want to, hey, we're going to come to the, you know, even this, we're going to come to the church. We're going to have this prayer meeting and we're going to begin to just see the Lord work and all these things. Instantly. And, oh, instantly. Right. And Are we expect it? Well, expect it. And, and, and I, I want to be very clear. Yeah. It is good to have expectant prayer. Sure. And, it's, and those things are also very good. Right. But the heart behind those things really matter. Mm-hmm. If you're doing that and you haven't been praying consistently on your own, right. then you're really kind of doing a lot more for show. Show. You know, yeah. but there's, there's something to be said right. about the consistency of that prayer, mm-hmm. especially individually, mm-hmm. compared to, hey, we're going to bring everybody together and do this together. Yeah. And so I think a big question that many of us have as Christians is, uh, how do we pray? How do we pray for our kids? And and so I'm going to touch on something that we're really going to focus a lot more on next week. Okay. Um, but I just want to give at least a introduction to it yeah. so that we can be thinking about it. So next week we can begin to come in prepared and say, this is how we teach this. Sure. Um, and so it's something called Acts, mm-hmm. um, just like the book, mm-hmm. you know, A-C-T-S. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a great way of how we, in a personal way, can begin to pray mm-hmm. for not only our own issues, but the issues of our family and our own students. So mm-hmm. it all starts really with the adoration. That's the first word. Mm-hmm. And so what is that? Adoration is something where we are naming the characteristics of God that we are grateful for. Um, and so, you know, he's our Lord and Savior. He's the king of all kings. Right. You know, Jesus is the one. He's the head of the body. Yeah. You know, and so... He's the firstborn of all creation. Is talking about being the highest ranking of all creation. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, we can begin to name these things out and declare and say, and to really, it helps us also, reminds us who. of who He is. Mm-hmm. Who we're and talking so, to. That's right. So we're coming before Him. Right. We're not talking about being thankful, but we're talking about, we're going to name some characteristics of Christ. Right. We're going to name some characteristics of really our fa- the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit mm-hmm. that um, kind of put us back in our place. Sure. You know, and so that's the first way to do it. The second one is C. Uh, and this is where confession comes into play. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a- adoration and then confession. So this is us putting our own sins before the Lord. Mm-hmm. So it's getting us and asking for forgiveness. It's getting us to a place mm-hmm. where we're in unity with the Lord and we're not right. disconnected because of the sin that we've already committed. One way I've heard it mm-hmm. is that once you adore the Lord and see who He is, mm. The second thing is you're left to see who you are, which is oh, yeah. confession. I'm I'm not who I should be. I'm not what I you know what who God wants me to be. And yeah, it plays right can, into it. So yeah. it starts with adoration. It puts us into a a place where we see that, and then we can, can confess. Right. And then this is where the place I think that as Christians we're probably the best. Yeah. <laughs> like when it comes to prayer. The T. Thanks. Giving, yeah, right. thankfulness, thanksgiving, yeah, and I thank you so much for this, or I thank you so much for oh, this, yeah. or thank you so much for this, thank you for the food that I have, thank you for the right. family that I, oh, I mean, yeah. I think that's actually how we usually start our prayers, mm-hmm. and so I want to challenge you that if you haven't done the Acts method, this is a method that's been around for many years, many top guys um, have have talked about this and do this themselves, mm-hmm. um, to challenge you guys to start with adoration and confession that leads into thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Because those two things, we could be thankful for God you know, really forgiving us of our sins mm-hmm. based on the adoration and confession that we had just given put sure. before Him. Sure. Um, and so thanksgiving is the next one. And the last one is two parts. It's supplication. Mm-hmm. And so we've done adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and now we're moving into supplication. And don't forget, next week we're going to be able to talk a lot more about this. But when it comes to our kids, there's two things. We can supplicate. So in other words, we are going before the Father on the behalf of someone else. Mm-hmm. And so, for example, with our own children, my child is experiencing this. My heart is broken with this. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with this. Or right. I'm overjoyed that they made this decision. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't always have to be negative. It can right. be positive too. Right. Like I'm overjoyed that they have come to faith in you. Mm-hmm. And we are just going to continue to mm-hmm. intercede on their behalf to see them grow. Right. And so that's where we want to start there. 
is on others, not on ourselves, on others. Right. And then at the end here, the second part of that supplication is going, Lord, this is my need that I need to place mm-hmm. before you. And so it reminds right. us of a lot of who he is, where our perspective is, mm-hmm. what we're thankful for, how we're really considering others first, and then we're putting our own desires before him last. And so that's a, what we're actually going to be talking about next week. But in that kind of even a framework, a simple acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, how do we do that specifically with our own kids? Like, like how do we begin this whole process because i think the discipline of doing it is also a barrier that we have to break through and especially doing it consistently right i think the thing is just to begin it to make it a priority um in your life to begin doing it if you haven't been praying for your children at all individually you know by yourself um and not just praying that things would get better but really spending time to just pray for child number one firstborn or child number two or however many children you have and praying you know by name and specifically i know i don't do that if 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 we're in confession mode individually specifically enough and just again going through maybe that acts method of even for them god you you know you saying things about him and then moving into uh things for them and all of that through the, mm-hmm. the confession, thanksgiving, and supplication, just individually, maybe even each child, if that's possible. That might be a challenge, but just spending time in prayer, I think is one of the things that we just underestimate mm-hmm. as, as a Christian. And really, it's one of our major spiritual weapons, Absolutely, the, the word is. and prayer. Mm-hmm. And, and really, we focus more on maybe just reading a couple of scriptures or me- memorizing a whole chapter or whatever. But disciple-making parents, parents that are making a difference in their child's life, uh, biblically and godly, are spending time, I believe, praying. And so, you know, I think that it's just doing it. That t- to try to answer your question is mm-hmm. literally making a priority and sticking to it, even if it's just right before bed, if it's first thing in the morning, if it's at your lunch break. Um, I, I've known several times, or I think in 2020, when we were really wrestling with, and not that we aren't, or not that we're over it, but in in some rough things that happened, I think in 2020, Mm -hmm. uh, some of the folks that were, that I heard were saying, maybe choose a time every day and put a reminder in your phone, pray for this every day at this time and <clears throat> put those reminders there to where they're going to pop up to where maybe you forget it on Monday, but Tuesday it's popping right back up Wednesday. And I've had that actually be really beneficial that I do forget some days out of the week, but that it's, it's consistently popping up reminds me more days than if I didn't have those reminders. I think it's a really good point. And I really love what you said about, you know, depending on how many kids you have, like interceding on their behalf individually and I was thinking through that. I was like, okay, so how, how would we do that? And, mm. you know, adoration, I almost think, is the one that we're going to have to really learn Oh yeah. in all of this. I think I almost stuttered when I was talking about it. Like, oh, how do I actually... It's tough, but, yeah, you know, we can also we can be like, right. Lord, you are the one who mm. created yeah. Firstborn. Right. Whatever the name is. Right. You know, mine's Piper, yeah. uh, Kaylee. Right. And so, you know, you created this beautiful little girl or this young woman or a young man or or, or little boy. Right. Um, and he is made in your image Mm. and God, we have a desire for him to grow up and to become more like who you designed him to be. Wow. Like we can adore Christ by looking at his creation and then, you know, confession, this is, I mean, I I was thinking through like, how would I do this personally? Mm -hmm. Confession is like, all right, we definitely have adored you, the Father, the Creator. But God, I have a hard time dealing with this. <laughs> you know, I need to confess myself that maybe I'm too impatient, mm. or maybe I'm not oh. giving them enough time. Like, like putting that the how specifically interceding on behalf of our kids, and then thank you know Thanksgiving. I'm thankful that my child is doing this or growing in this way, mm-hmm. and then that supplication. That's where it kind of gets easier. Hey, we are bringing this oh, before man. you and things like that. Sort of. so well, I know I a lot of things. That, even we in your two-part supplication, again, mm-hmm. we're uh, today we're talking about praying for your children. So I just think in that two-part supplication could be, God, I'm praying for wisdom. God, oh, I'm praying yes. for direction. I know that's maybe the last part that we can focus on. Help me with this. Help me with this. But 
your first part of supplication hit me in a way that maybe I haven't thought of is, God, I pray for Kaylee with this. I pray mm-hmm. that you would help her to be this way, or God, you would surround her today, or maybe even as uh, lots of kids uh, these days, maybe more than ever, or definitely right now, have trouble sometimes going to sleep, or sometimes going off to school, or doing school, or whatever, that oh, maybe yeah. in those moments, or in that day, you know, lifting all that, man. or being <laughs> like discouraged. That is, yeah, Friends have been a major part of a lot of our children's lives, depending mm-hmm. on what age they are, and it's been a different kind of environment the last uh, year or nine months, 10 months of, of this year. And, and again, we say that, that things haven't dramatically changed now that it's 2021. Yeah. Um, but this idea of praying, man, I think it does have, it is the difference maker. It is the change that we need um, and that we need to continue following if maybe we have been doing it. It's just continuing in prayer. So yeah. a couple other ways, I know Acts is such a good way mm-hmm. to, to pray and to use. Uh, another one that I thought of that was in this book that we we underutilize, I think, that I know I haven't always been taught is the idea of fasting and praying. Yeah. Whether it's a lunch break or breakfast or it's a whole day, man, I think that Jesus taught us that example of fasting and praying. And I saw several churches um, the, around the, the nation that were challenging their, their people in their, in their church to begin the year with a daily or weekly or a specific kind of even, where it mm-hmm. doesn't mean you exclude food altogether, but you exclude certain parts or things like that. But to right. not just to, it's not about food, it's about taking that time and spending it in prayer, mm-hmm. right? And that to do that as a parent for our children, I think, is a way that we could pray. And again, I know that that's an area where I would like to see improvement in my life. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah, taking that time that I might stop by Whataburger or stop by Chick-fil-A or whatever it is to pick up food and go Mm -hmm. have a moment, could instead I choose to do something a little bit different, but yet it would draw me closer to God, and I would be praying on behalf of my, my children, my family, um, yeah. I think that this is all really good and challenging because I, I even while we were talking, um, I was just thinking, okay, this is how I can improve in this specific area in our life. And, uh, and what I love about this conversation that we have every week yeah, and, uh, and really, uh, the audience here just engaging with you and we're learning during this process. Right. And, uh, and the goal here is to become a better disciple maker. And how do we do that? Well, we do that in community. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a part of that piece of the puzzle. Um, and so as I'm thinking through this, of like, how do we begin to do this? Well, everyone that's watching this video is going to be in a different area. Yeah. They're also going to have kids of the different ages. Right. Some may be older than I am. Yeah. You know, at the same time. So, uh, and may, even older than you as well. But how can you still do this? Well, it, it really is going to be you evaluating where you're at. Do you even pray for your kids? Mm-hmm. You know, are you praying for them? If you are, how is that going? Like, what are you specifically bringing before? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. How often? Right. Yeah. And these things. And let's just together as a community to, to encourage one another to go a step further um, in our walk with the Lord. Why? Well, ultimately, we're doing it on the behalf of our kids, the ones that we love and the one that God has entrusted us. Um, with and so mm-hmm. um, next week, what we're going to be talking about is how to teach our kids how to pray. And so between now and then, mm-hmm. let's go ahead and jump in on this praying for our children and leading up to that next week and test some of these things that you've we've talked about today. Mm-hmm. See how they're working in your family mm-hmm. and uh, begin to do it so that next week we can come in. And have an idea of what this idea looks like when it comes to Acts prayer. Um, or there's different, many different methods. It's just one of many. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of my favorite methods. But um, it's one of many methods. And then how can we teach our kids? Because how we teach our kids are going to differ be- between what ages they're going to be. Right. So whether they're three, like I have a three-year-old. Or right. you know th- they're 13 or 16 to 18. And so, right. you know, or anywhere in between. There's a p- tons of different ages. And I think that we can continue to grow our kids and how they pray as they grow up too. So 
Guys, we look forward to seeing you again next week. We're going to be in chapter 21, and it's going to be talking about teaching our children how to pray. So y'all have a great week. Go ahead and begin to intercede on your kids' behalf, and we'll see you again next week.